10 minute blood in his hand, a three player game. Come on back after the break. Welcome to the show, Board Game Reviews. This is a YouTube channel dedicated to the board game hobby, and this video is part of a series of videos looking at Kemet Blood and Sand. Now, Kemet Blood and Sand, this is the second edition of the game, and this is basically a dues on the map style war game where the players are going to be attacking each other, and the first person to get nine victory points and have nine victory points at the start of the turn is going to be the winner of the game. We're going to play the game over multiple phases, day and night phases, getting resources, attacking other players, trying to control certain areas of the board, and again, whoever starts their turn with nine victory points, they instantly win the game. Now in this video right here, I'm going to show you some gameplay so you can see exactly how Kemet Blood and Sand actually plays. If all you're looking for though is a quick overview, a tutorial video, or just a final review of what this game is, check out the other videos in the series. This video right here is going to be some Samu gameplay only. So that's enough of the talking. Let's go ahead and start the game with a three-player game with Bastet, Nebkow, and Anubis, or I'm just going to call them yellow, green, and red because it can be a heck of a lot easier. And we all know how great I am at pronouncing things, especially when I get really into a game. Yeah, well, it just happens. But the whole idea of this game is this is going to be a war style game and we have everything set up. This is a basic setup for a three player game. Now, when you play a three player game, you're only going to use half of the map. And basically it's these entire regions on this side of the Nile River, but it also includes this Temple of the Great Gods right here. So the Temple of the Great Gods plus this side of the river, everything on this side of the river doesn't basically exist in this game. And as you have more players, you're going to unlock more of the map. We are playing a game with three different power tiles. We have the red, the white, and the blue power tiles. And those are the power tiles we're going to be using for this game. And we've randomly decided who's going to be the first player. We are going to start with black, then it's going to be green, and then it's going to be the yellow player's turn. So basically I have a standard setup here for the game, but there's a few things that you're going to randomize every time you play the game. And it's not really randomized. It's players are going to get a couple extra cards, and every single player is going to pick one power tile to start with. And so that can affect the strategies. I have not actually done that part of the gameplay, because since that is part of the strategy of the game, I want to make sure I include that, because that can help you see exactly how the game plays. So let's go ahead and cover the first thing first. We're going to get two divine intervention cards for every one of our players. Now the interesting thing about the divine intervention cards is these are power cards that can be used during the day phase. During the night phase they can also be used for movement and they can also be used for combat. Now generally speaking you never show any player divine intervention cards and every player starts with two random ones plus the one divine intervention card that every single player starts with and this is basically a bluffing card. Because the way these divine intervention cards work is during combat if you have a combat style divine intervention card you're going to play a divine intervention card with your combat card. Now the reason why you have this bluffing card and what's new to the second edition of Kymet, which is something you're not familiar with if you played the earlier editions, is the reason why you want to have this bluffing card is it allows you to play a card with your combat card but the other player, opponent at the table that you're fighting doesn't know if you're playing a real divine intervention card or if you're playing the bluffing card. So that's why all of our players get the bluffing card. So I'm going to reveal these cards just so you see what every one of our armies have and the first set is going to be for the yellow player. Now, yellow player has two of them. The first one is allow them to teleport for a move action. The nice thing about this divine intervention card is it's not only teleporting from your pyramids to the obelisk. You basically teleport from anywhere to any one of the obelisks, so that's a nice bonus. And then the other thing is going to be a plus two to your combat strength for a co power cost of one power. Now, again, these are never shown to other players, but I'm going to leave these face up to make it a little bit easier on me so I don't forget which one of these players has which divine intervention card. It's going to look pretty funny and pretty silly if I forget because that's going to make things look really odd. So next one is going to be for the green player and they are going to get two divine intervention cards too. Both these are combat cards. This one is one free kill. Now there's two different kinds of damage abilities in this game now. You have a black blood drop which is an instant kill. There's no defense that can stop it. And then you have the red blood drops which can be stopped by defense. So this is going to be one instant kill and this is going to be two extra damage as long as he bypasses defense. That's going to be for the green player. Again, these starting divine intervention guards can kind of influence your decisions and your strategies. The next up we have the black which is going to get plus one defense. It's a combat card. And this one right here is going to be spending one power to remove an enemy unit from the board anywhere. Now this is actually very, very devious because the nice thing about this is this is not used during combat. So as a player, I can play this card, pay one power, destroy an enemy's unit, 
and then take my action, move in there and attack that player because now they have reduced strength. So it's all part of the strategies and all the fun of the game of Kemet. So what we've done for every one of our players here, let's go over a quick overview of the pyramid decisions every one of our players have made. Now, before I go any further, I wanna emphasize here, the whole idea of this video is just to show you gameplay. I am not trying to be a super strate strategist when I'm playing this game. I'm showing you gameplay, showing you how the game plays and showing you all the different interactions of the game because you seeing how the game plays is gonna help you decide there's gonna be a game for you and your friends and your gaming group. So that basically means I'm not always gonna be making the optimal decisions. I am gonna make the decisions that are gonna show you the most amount of gameplay. So again, this is not a strategy video. Please don't feel it's a strategy video. Of course, you always leave comments down below if you say, why did you do that bonehead movement? And I'm probably gonna tell you, well, it's just show you how the game plays. So starting over with black, we're gonna see that they have one level two pyramid, one level one blue pyramid, and no third pyramid. So to bring in the white pyramid, they need to spend at least one power. Moving over to green, they so we see that they chose a nice, even balancing start. They're gonna have one level of every single power pyramid, red, white, and blue starting at the game. And finally, we go over to yellow, who's gonna start with a level two white pyramid and a level one blue pyramid, and that's their starting decision. So the only thing left for all of our players to do is to pick their starting power tile. Now remember, you only pick a starting level one power tile that matches one of the pyramids you currently control. So that means yellow cannot take a red power tile, black cannot take a white power tile, and the green player has all the options of all three of the power tiles they want. Now the power tiles are generally referred to as ruby and diamond and et cetera, basically based on gems, but I'm gonna make it easy because I don't expect everybody watching this video to know how to play the game. So I'm simply going to refer to the colors because that's for simplicity of all the viewers out there. Basically red power tiles, white power tiles, and then the blue power tiles. Make it as super simple as possible. So the first thing we're gonna have is we're gonna start with the black player. They have red and blue, and I'm pretty much knowing what I wanna do because as a black player, our strategy that we're gonna pick for this player, again for the gameplay, is we wanna start spreading across the map because the one of the big ways that you gain victory points in this game is by attacking other players. Now there's two kinds of victory points in this game. There's permanent victory points which cannot be taken away from you and they're represented by the square victory point tokens. And then there's temporary victory points that you only have those victory points as long as you meet the condition for that victory point. As long as you keep meeting that condition, you keep that victory point, but people can steal those victory points from you and those are circular victory points. So my basic objective is to try to gain as many victory points with this player as possible, which means I want to get movement. So we're gonna take the level one movement power and this means that every time I perform the move action, instead of moving one space, all of my units can now move two, plus I may get extra bonuses that will add on even further to that. So we'll simply place that down there like that. Next up, we're gonna go up to the green player. Now the green player has a couple different options and a couple different ideas of what they wanna do, but they are gonna take a very nice, easy start and they're gonna pick a white power tile. And this white power tile right here says that anytime they purchase any other power tile, it's gonna be a minus one to the cost. Now this is gonna be a long-term benefit because this basically means every single power tile is gonna cost one less. One less power cost means you have one more power every turn effectively because it's very common to buy at least one power tile per round Sometimes people buy two. So again, this is gonna pay off in the long run, especially if you get it very early in the game. So we'll place this down here so we have a reminder of that. And then finally, we're gonna go over to the yellow player and they are gonna pick their level one power tile and they're gonna take the prayer power tile. Now what this prayer power tile means is that every single time that they take the prayer action, they're gonna gain one extra prayer power. So basically, instead of these giving two prayer power a piece, every one of those actions is gonna give three prayer power they are building up their economy and trying to figure out the decisions and the way they want to play at the start of the game. Now, before we go any further into the game, understand that I played the original Kemet many, many, many times. I played the original Kemet so many times, that's my favorite board game when it comes to dudes on map style games. As a matter of fact, if you top, watch my top 51 games of all time, Kemet is very, very high up on the list. This is the second edition of the game and this is not even my copy of the game. This is a copy of the game I'm actually currently borrowing. So I might make an occasional rules gaffe for the simple fact that there are changes between the first and the second edition. And I'm actually gonna do a far separate video, completely unrelated to this normal series of videos I normally do, where I'm gonna completely cover the differences between the first and the second edition of the game because I know a lot of people are curious, is the second edition really, really worth it? And I'm not gonna give away any spoilers, but I'm definitely gonna do that as a separate video. But I just wanna say this right here during the gameplay video, I might fall back into old habits. There are differences. For example, in the game with the second edition, you start with seven power. 
that's different for me. You also start with power tiles, that's different for me. So again, there are some minor changes in the game, so if I make a goof, I'm gonna leave comments down below to try to correct them, but again, if you see any goofs, make sure you check the comments down below and make sure it's something that I actually caught. So, back to the gameplay. Let's go ahead and start with Black, who's gonna be the very first player, because we see that earn the turn order. And the very first thing they are gonna do as their very, very first action is they are going to burn some power. And the very first amount of power they're gonna do is by taking an action. And the first thing they're gonna do is they're going to raise a pyramid. Now, this is their first action token that they are going to use and they're gonna raise a pyramid up two levels. Now to go to level three is gonna be three power, to raise it one more level to level four is gonna be four more power for a total of seven power. Now the nice thing is you take the action once, you raise a pyramid as many levels as you want, but that is effectively going to burn seven of our power. Is it a gamble? Is it a good idea? Well, we will find out very, very shortly, but that's gonna make for a quick, quick turn for the black player. Now let's go ahead and start with the white player or the next player in line, which is going to be the green player. So the green player for the turn, they are gonna purchase a power tile. Now the power tile they want to buy requires them to have a higher level blue pyramid. So they are going to go ahead and they are going to upgrade their blue pyramids. And the blue pyramid we are gonna get is we need to have at least a level three pyramid. And the reason why we want this is because we want this power tile right there which allows us to have a total of seven units in our troop. In the standard rules, no troop can have more than five units. So that's already gonna give them a wonderful offensive strength when it comes to the game. But to do this, we need to get to a level three pyramid. So to go level two is two points, to go level three is three more points, that's gonna be a total of five power. So we're gonna take the action to upgrade a pyramid. We're gonna spend five power, which means we're gonna go from seven down to two power, and then we are going to get a level three pyramid. So we will simply spend all the power Put the nice pyramid, pyramid token right there and put the nice little Luxor pyramid topper right there. That's it for the green player's turn. Let's go ahead and go over to yellow. Now the yellow player, they are also, <laughs> it's kind of a fun strategy to do this and allows you, again, I'm trying to show you as much gameplay as possible. Probably not the best strategies, but I'm definitely showing you as much gameplay as possible. They are also going to upgrade the pyramid and they're gonna go to a level four white pyramid. So you've already seen the math, you already know how this is me. Upgrade pyramid. Burn seven power, and now we have a level four white pyramid. And this is gonna make some for some very quick early first rounds, but the later rounds are gonna be really, really interesting. Back over to the black player now. So the black player, they are gonna take one of their action tokens right here, and they're gonna gain two power. Nice, quick, and easy, not much to their turn. Now we get to go over to the green player, who is gonna spend three power. Oh, they don't have three power yet. So they are going to get two power right now. That's gonna burn from two all the way up to four power. Their turn's over, go over to the yellow player who is going to get the, are they the ones who has a prayer bonus? Yes, so I gotta make sure I don't forget that. So they are gonna pray and get the prayer action which doesn't give them three power because they have this power tile which makes every one of the prayer actions give one bonus power for a total of three. So now they are at three power versus four power versus two power. So you see how these decisions are already starting to pan out for all of our players. So back to black, they are gonna take the prayer action one more time, that's gonna give them two more power. They are back up to four. We are gonna go over to the green player who's gonna burn three power right now. It's gonna bring them down to one power right there. And they are gonna get a level three power token. Now this power ability, like I have already stated, would normally cost them three, but they do have this bonus right here, which means that we're gonna cost them two power, so we're gonna gain one more power back. And now we have the ability that every one of our armies can have a total of seven units in the full troop, and that's gonna be a wonderful bonus. That's gonna help us a lot, because the bigger your army, the more powerful you are when it comes to attacking. So that's it for them. Now let's go ahead and go over to the yellow player, who is going to do the prayer action one more time, going from three all the way up to six power basically biding their time, watching what the other player's doing, because there's a couple things they want to do, but they're not quite sure what everybody else is doing, and you don't want to jump too far ahead and be the only player without power, because if you're without power, there's not much you can do, or your action selection is kind of restricted. So back over to the black player now. So the black player for their turn, they are just going to jump right into their strategy. They're going for a full offensive strategy. Maybe it's the best strategy, maybe it's not a great strategy, who knows, but we're definitely going to do this. We are going to purchase a red power tile, which is gonna burn all four of our power because we are buying a level four power tile. And the power tile we are going to purchase is we are gonna 
up the scorpion. Now, scorpion means that from now on, every single troop, as long as it has a scorpion with them, is going to plus one to our movement. So that means that one of our troops is going to have a movement of three. They're going to plus two to their attack, and they're going to plus two to their damage. That's going to start stacking up, and that's going to start making a huge, huge difference. Now, I forgot to pull out the power tiles for our victory points for our players who got the level four pyramids. So they have a level four pyramid, and yellow has a yellow four or level four pyramid. So I need to make sure I do that before I forget here really, really quickly. So yellow has one power and black has one power that I almost forgot to do that. But that is it for the black player. They have one action cube left or one action disc. Now remember, you are required to do at least one action on every one of the levels of the pyramid. So that means they have to do a move action or they have to do a summon action. So we can't summon any more units because we don't have any more power. So it's pretty much a foregone conclusion what the black units are going to do on their turn. But let's go over to the green player. So the green player has a couple different options. They have two power left. They're going to go ahead and they are going to do a prayer action, gaining two more power because they want to watch to see exactly what black is going to do. Now, fortunately, black cannot invade us unless we took the phoenix because the phoenix has the power that you can avoid walls. Now, if black had taken the phoenix, then green definitely would have started bringing in some more units to at least protect themselves, and hopefully they have some good divine intervention cards so they can go into a combat. Since the black player didn't do that, they were not as concerned about that happening because the scorpion came out. So again, that's how the strategies evolve as you're playing the game. So they're going to go for the power, and then we are going to go over to yellow, who has a couple different options of what they want to do right now. I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy a power tile. And the reason why we're going to buy a power tile is because in this game, you never ever want to be power starved because being power starved is a huge hindrance in the game. If you have more power than all the other players, you have a lot more options that you can do on your turn because bringing in units uses up power, buying power tiles uses up power, and even using divine intervention cards uses up power. So it's good to have those kind of options. So we are going to buy a level four power, which is going to cost us two, or it's going to cost us four, bring us down to two, and we are going to buy a, grab this power tile right here which means during the night phase, as we're doing the refresh during the night phase, we are going to gain seven power. So we have a wonderful engine going. This basically means that every single turn, it doesn't matter what the total status of the board is, the yellow player can generate a total of 13 power. Now there's a maximum amount of 11, so you're not gonna do it all at once, but it's just something to consider, letting you know that they have a heck of a lot of options. Now let's go back to black, who has one option, and their option is they are going to march. Now couple different ways I can do this. I am thinking that we want to march in a way that's going to give us the most amount of power in future turns. As like I said, you don't want to be power starved. So that means getting to this temple right here. So if I took the scorpion, I can do a one move, sail the Nile right here, which would be a two move, and a three move would allow us to move into this section right here. Alternately, another thing I could do is if I can get all the way over to here, I can sacrifice one unit and gain five power, which could be really darn good also. But I don't want to sacrifice units quite yet because I don't want to put a big old bullseye on my forehead here. So we are simply going to do the move action and we're going to move three spots. Now the reason why we move three, we have the scorpion plus one movement and we have the basic power, which is plus one movement. So we have a total movement of three. So I'm just going to move the scorpion because I'm not going to pick a big old handful. This will be one point of movement. Sailing the Nile right here would be a second point of movement. And since that's a blue dock, we can land there. And then a third point of movement would allow us to move here directly. Now, of course, if we actually had two power left over, we could have ignored that and we could have literally teleported from our pyramid all the way over to this black obelisk. But since we did not have any power left over, that was not an option for us. Now, we're going to claim this temporary victory point right here, which means we are now at two victory points. Of course, it does paint a big old bullseye on our forehead, but that's the way we play the game of Kemet. So now we're going to go over to the green player who has a couple different options of what they could do on their turn. And I think we are going to do a quick summoning of some units. Now that's going to leave us power left over, but remember power does carry over to future rounds. So this is not a bad idea at all, especially since we're not going to be generating any power because we didn't do anything that's really good. But I'm going to find a way to work around that because we're going to do a really cool move action instead. And I'm going to put our unit right here, and we are going to do a simple teleport action, which is going to cost us two power. So we're going to go down to four, all the way down to two power. And we're going to send all five of our units who are going to beam up, Stargate style, and then they're going to land over here in this temple right here. That's going to give them their 
first victory point. Again, that's a temporary victory point, so don't hold on to it too dearly there. But that's going to be the end of the turn. Now we get to go over to the yellow player who actually has quite a few options. I am thinking that we are generating a lot of power, but generating more power is not necessarily a bad idea at all. So we are going to burn, burn our last two power and we are going to do a move action right here. And again, we're going to beam up Stargate style and we are going to launch into and out over here. Now we could have started a combat, which maybe may not have been a bad idea at all. And actually, I'm thinking I got a better idea because again, I'm trying to show you as much gameplay as possible. Instead of this, I'm going to do a super duper aggressive move, which is probably not a good strategy right here. But we're going to teleport into the sanctuary of all gods. Why? Because that's immediate victory points during the night phase. And if we start generating victory points when we also generate power, sacrificing these guys and summoning more guys is not going to be a problem for us at all. So let's go ahead and do this. That is basically it for our first round's day phase. Now we get to go over to the night phase. So the top of the night phase, now the night phase does not necessarily happen in player order, it happens in order of basically of locations that happen first. So the very first thing that happens during the night phase is a sanctuary of all gods. If anybody controls it, they have the option of sacrificing two of their units and then they can generate one permanent victory point. Now again, one permanent victory point is very nice because when you generate that victory point, there's nothing that anybody can do can steal that victory point for you. That is a victory point that's locked in, which means that the yellow player is effectively at one permanent victory point, but two total victory points, which means that they are two out of nine. They're getting closer to winning the game. Next up, the player who controls the Delta Temple can decide to sacrifice one unit, and that will allow them to generate five power. So we have two power left over, so two plus five is going to put us all the way up to seven power, meaning that we're going to move into the next day phase, looking pretty darn decently right here. Next up, we're going to see if any single player controls two temples. One of three player game, that's going to be pretty darn obvious that that happens because there's really only three temples in the three player game. So of course that's not it, but if any player did control two temples, they would gain one permanent victory point, but we can go ahead and move past that. Now we move to the point where any standard temples, which would be basically these two temples in a three player game, if anybody controls them, they're going to gain the amount of power based on those temples. So black controls this temple right here, which means they're going to gain three power. Which means next turn is not looking too great for them. They're kind of trailing, especially when they compare themselves all the way over to what the yellow and the green are going to be generating next round. Now it's time for prayers, and basically every single player is going to do this all at the same time, which basically means that every single player is going to gain two power total. So that means that yellow goes to two, green is going to go to nine, and the black player is going to go all the way up to five power. Now this happens for every single player. It doesn't matter what you control. This is free power for every single one of our players. Additionally, if any player happen to have any veteran tokens, they can also discard those veteran tokens right at this point in player order and decide if they want to sacrifice these veteran tokens to go ahead and gain power on a one for one basis. No combats happen, so we don't have any veteran tokens to worry about. Now all of our players are going to gain divine intervention cards, and of course this would be the time that if we had any veteran tokens, players can also discard their divine intervention tokens for additional divine intervention the DI cards, but again, every single player is going to get one for free. So we're going to draw this in player order, which means this is going to be for the black player. Again, you don't show them to the players, but for gameplay purposes, I'm going to show you that this is a day phase one, which is going to allow you to gain two units, which is going to be very, very nice. So this is going to go over here to this player. Next up is going to be for the green player, which is going to gain pretty much the exact same one. I guess I didn't do as good of a shuffle as I thought. And then finally for the yellow player, oh, we're going to get a nice defensive card right here, which means during combat you're going to get plus one to your defense, which is pretty darn good because that works whether you're on the offensive or on the defensive. Now at this point, players could do some conscription if they wanted to. Basically, they have to have units back in their available power or their available pool. But of course, that requires veteran tokens, so we can just go ahead and bypass this phase on this first round. And now it's time for the awakening phase, which basically means all the players are going to regain their action tiles, and we're simply going to take these action tiles back and that way the players are ready to spend their action tiles on the next round. And then after we do this little quick spot, now it's time for the players to start getting some extra bonuses, especially from bonus power tiles. And then we get to move to the destiny phase, which means that all the players, we're going to figure out the new turn order based on whoever has the least amount of victory points. So let's go ahead and hand out the power tile for the yellow player who gets plus seven. And actually, I think I made a mistake. I think you're actually supposed to get this during the prayer step. But I think I'm falling back on the first edition rules there. I'm actually almost positive that this is supposed to happen during the prayer step. But that's okay, not a big deal. Now let's go ahead and figure out the new turn order for all of our players. 
So we see right now that green player currently has the least amount of victory points, which means they are going to be the new first player. And since these two players are tied for player order, the person who was next in player order gets to break the tie and figure out which order they want to go in. Now Black is looking at the current state of the board and deciding that they want to play a little bit of a waiting game. Having these nice reserves back here means that they have possibilities to teleport anywhere they want. So going a little bit later in the turn order could actually be a good decision for them. So they will decide that they are going to go last in the turn order here. Now the nice thing about turn order in this game, you actually get to pick your place in turn order. Green does want to go first because they actually have a strategy they want to do. They want to go first because they need to reinforce us as quickly as possible because if they fail to reinforce us, they know that they're going to lose the space very, very darn quickly. That's why they want to be first. So now that we're done with our very first round, we can go on to round two, starting with round two's day phase. And of course, that's going to start with the green player. Now, green player, the first thing they're going to do is they are going to take a very simple move action. And I think because we know we're going to summon afterwards, we are going to take the move action right there. And we are going to spend a two power going down from nine down to seven. And then we are going to teleport three units. Why are we going to teleport three units? Well, the nice thing is that since we have the power tile, it allows us to have a total of seven units in a troop. We can have seven units here, which means we've effectively done a darn good job of protecting the spot, meaning that we can burn extra units for power. That's basically it for our action. Now we get to go over to the yellow player. Now the yellow player is looking over here and deciding, okay, do we want to try to hold on to this to keep buying victory points every single round? Or do we want to start moving around and maneuvering and stopping the other players from taking their actions? Now, again, we do have a lot of options and we don't have to be offensive, but it's definitely not the way to play Kemet. Kemet is a very offensive game, so you want to play Kemet offensively. So we need to get victory points as quick as possible. So the ways to get victory points are to attack other players and to control pyramids and stuff like that. So... I am thinking that we are going to do a simple sacrifice there. We are not going to worry about that at all. Let's go ahead and take a move action. We are going to burn two power going from nine all the way down to seven power. And we are going to play a game of Be Me Up Scotty. And we are going to move over here. And that means that we now have three victory points. We're a third of the way to winning the game if nobody stops us and plays very, very smart. That is it. Now we get to move over to the black player's turn and they get to decide exactly what they want to do. So the black player wants to do a couple different actions on their turn and they want to do this in the right order. Now, originally what we were thinking about with the black player was we were just going to bombard this location, but unfortunately they reinforced there. So we could do that. Or the other option we can do is we can bombard this location because this player is weak. And after we gain the victory points for taking out that location, if we have any units that survive, we can also then just sacrifice and get another victory point. So we can turn this into a four victory point round if we play it smart. So let's go ahead and do that right now. But before we do that, we're going to burn a divine intervention card, guaranteeing that we are going to win this fight because that's what you want to do in the game of Kemet. So we're going to spend one power for the black player. We're going down from five down to four. We'll discard this divine intervention card right here into the discard pile. And then as our action, we are going to do a move action. So we're going to spend from four down to two power. We are going to do a teleport action and we are going to play the game of beam me up Scotty Stargate style. And we are going to come all the way over to this location right here. And in the wonderful game of Kemet, no two units, enemy units can occupy the same space. So now we have our first battle. So in the game of Kemet, when you do a normal battle, again, you don't show the other players the cards you're playing, but for camera purposes, so you can see the gameplay and how the game works, I'm gonna show you the cards we're playing. I'm gonna explain to you why we are playing these cards. Now we, as the black player, we know that we have a five strength versus a three strength. We know that in the way that combat works, right now we're basically winning the game when it comes to the game of this combat right here, not the entire game. Sorry, don't want to misspeak, misspoke here. So we could play this card right here, which is going to give us a total of nine attack strength. Most likely, the yellow player doesn't have a way to stop us from getting nine attack strength. At least we don't think so. But again, we don't know what divine intervention cards have. But the other option that we could do is we could play our card, which is going to guarantee that we get two kills. And on top of that, we're going to get plus five to our strength. 
All we need to do is have one unit survive here, so that's all we really want to do. So we're going to play this to be super duper aggressive. Now we need to pick a card that we are going to discard, a card that we cannot play. And I'm thinking that we want to get rid of an average looking card. So let's get rid of this card. Again, this card is going to be played face down. The other players have no idea what card we just played face down. And I'll put it over here so I don't make a mistake. And then we are going to pick our card that's going to be our combat card. I'll place that combat card down right there just so we know what the combat card we are playing. And on top of that, we will play a Divine Intervention card just to make sure that this player does not have any secrets that we do not know about. Now we got to go to the yellow player who needs to look at all their cards and everything that they need to do. So they're seeing that it looks like this battle is probably going to be a foregone conclusion. So do they just give up the fight and lose a whole bunch of units? Or do they play a couple of combat cards and hope that they can also come out on top? So I am thinking that we are going to do a really good attempt at an attack. And then we're going to hope this is going to work out for us. So this is the card we are going to play. These are the two divine intervention cards we are going to play in this fight. Again, the other player doesn't know what cards we're playing. But before we do that, we need to pick a card that we are going to play face down. And that is a card we're going to lose access to until we go through our entire stack of cards. So that is it for all those cards. Now that all of our players have finished this part of the combat phase, we get to move to the confrontation part. Now for the confrontation part, we're basically going to reveal all the cards and we're going to figure out what the combat results happen to be. So let's go ahead and reveal our cards here. So first for black, we have a card here that is plus five strength and it's going to do two automatic damage. And we play the divine intervention card, which will give us plus one defense. We're hoping at least one unit survives here because if at least one unit survives here and if we can hold that spot long enough, we can sacrifice a unit or two units, hopefully, for a victory point if that ends up being the circumstance. So for the yellow player, they play this card right here, which is plus four to their strength, plus one to their damage. But we're also playing this Divine Intervention card, which is plus two to our strength. And then we're playing this card right here, which is going to be plus one to our defense. Now when it comes to Kemet, if you are the defender, you win all ties. So that was our hope is to get our strength up as high as we could. So let's go and figure out what the total strengths are for both our units here. So we'll figure out for yellow first, we have three, plus four is seven, plus two is a total strength of nine. Is that gonna be enough to save us? No, it's not, but let's go ahead and for the rest of the phase here. For black, we have a total strength of five plus five is 10. 10 as the attacker is greater than the defender is nine strength, so we know that black has won the fight. So now we figured out the total battle results. Now we look to see if there's any unblockable damage in this fight. And yes, there is. So the black player is gonna cause two unblockable casualties because we see that we have the black blood drop in a number two next to it. So that means two units are defeated. So now we need to figure out what kind of casualties are gonna happen based on the red blood drops. You're gonna take the total amount of blood drops versus the opponent's defense. That's how many units are gonna use. Well, black did not play a card that has any red blood drops, so it doesn't matter. The red player though, did play a card with one red blood drop, but we happen to have one defense. So that means they are gonna counteract each other, which means we are not gonna lose any units at all. So now we resolve the battle. Let's go ahead and spend the one power for a divine intervention card. And then these cards are going to be discarded. That one is discarded there. This card is going to be discarded there. And since these battle cards were used, we cannot use these battle cards anymore until they come back into our hand. So that's something that all the players who are playing the game need to factor in because that card is going to be played face up. So you can leave that card face up so all the other players know what that card happens to be. So let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to get. We're going to get one permanent victory point because we won the fight as a black player. So now black is all the way up to three victory points. Now we are going to gain veteran tokens. So every single player is going to gain one, victor, one veteran token. So the yellow player as the defender, since they did not gain a fame point, they're going to gain one veteran token and black doesn't gain any veteran tokens because I forgot we just won. So we're not getting that. We get a victory point, which is a lot better than the veteran tokens. So that is basically it for our very first combat of the game. Now the yellow player, since they lost the battle, they need to decide if they want to do a recall or if they want to do a retreat action. Now the first edition of the game, it was always better to do a recall action because you were guaranteed to get one power back. Unfortunately, the amount of power you get during the recall action is now minus one. So if I were to recall just this one unit, I get nothing for it. But also moving is totally pointless because I'm gonna be one lonely unit there. So I'm just gonna do a recall action anyways, because that's gonna give us some units and stuff that we can do. So that's basically it. Now black's turn is over. We get to go back to the green player who needs to figure out what they want to do. 
We're going to do a reinforcements action. We are going to burn three power going from seven and down to four power right there. And we're going to summon three units and we are going to put these three units right here. So we're back up to five units protecting our red pyramid right there. That's it for green. Now yellow needs to decide what they want to do. Well, we have a pretty easy decision right here. We are also going to summon more units. We're going to summon five units and we're going to put them right here next to our blue pyramid. Now we get to go back to the black player who actually has some decisions on what exactly they want to do. <sighs> I am thinking, now this is the thing here. We actually have a lot of options here. I want to hold on to this, but I also want, I want it all. Hey, let's start singing a queen song because I want it now. I need to figure out what I want to do here. I am just going to, let's just, Okay, in this game, to get victory points, you need to attack. But we need power. But we need power tiles. We need everything. What do I want to do here? I don't want to just summon two units. Although that wouldn't be a terrible idea. Although I am thinking that is probably a good idea to get our level one white pyramid out. The reason why is because if we get this power tile right here, the prayer action is going to be much better for us because right now the prayer power is not going to do a lot of good for us. So let's go ahead and build a level one pyramid. We're going to spend one power to bring out our level one white pyramid right here and right now. And that's going to be it for our action. Let's go ahead and go back to green. And green also has a lot of decisions. Green is locking down that. But again, fortune favors the bold. You don't want to just sit there and rest on your laurels because nothing good is going to happen for you. So I think what we are going to do is we are going to pick a good combat tile, which is going to allow us to start spreading out and start doing some really, really good things. I'm thinking that we want to get the war elephant. The war elephant is going to give us plus one to remove, it's going to give us plus one strength, and it's going to give us plus one defense. And it doesn't cost a lot, and we can definitely use it to go one, and then two, and take out this pyramid here, or this temple right here. That will allow us to control two temples. Controlling two temples at the night phase is going to be one permanent victory point. I'm liking that. That's a really good decision in my mind. So let's go ahead and do a two power four down to two and we are going to get the war elephant now the war elephant gets to be added to this troop right here and we will put the war elephant over here and we will remember that this specific troop right here now has a movement of two plus one to attack and plus one to defense and now remember green has not used any combat cards yet yellow has and we know one of the combat cards they've used we don't know the one was discarded but we can use that knowledge to make sure that we plan the cards the combat cards we want to use our turn's over though, let's go back to the yellow player. Now yellow needs to figure out a good idea of exactly what they want to do. Think as a yellow player, we are gonna play it just a little bit safe and we're just gonna build up a pyramid. I'm thinking we're gonna want the red pyramid and a red pyramid allows us to buy some combat tiles and to do some things because I'm liking the thought of that scarab. So to go to level one would be one power to go to level two would be three power. To go to level three would be six power. I have six power, I'm going to do this. So let's go ahead and raise our temple. We're gonna spend all six of our power. Now remember, we still have prayer, which means we still have six power to go. And we're gonna bring out a level three pyramid here. So level three pyramid right there for the yellow player, placing it right there, which means next round, we can pray, get three power, and then for final action is we can get the beetle, which is actually a good set of room moves for this round. That is it for yellow. Now we get to go back to black. And black does not want to rest on the laurels. Okay, black is going to pray. No, wait. I already th thought about what I'm doing. I raised my level one pyramid. So we are going to grab a white power tile, which is going to cost us one power, our last power here. And that's going to give us this power tile, which means that our prayer actions are going to be better for us. That means we get six power before this turn is over. Now let's go back to the green player who has two actions left and they need to figure out what they want to do. We are going to move. Spend your action token right here. And 
I could spend two power and teleport, but I really don't need to do that because we actually have two movement with this unit because we have the, the elephant right here. So we're gonna take this whole unit here and we're gonna go one space, two spaces, and we are going to move all of our units over here and we are now going to attack the yellow player. So now we have our second combat of the game. So the first thing green player needs to do is they need to figure out which battle plan card they want to use. Right now we have a total of three strength, or I'm sorry, a total of five strength. We have plus one to our strength from the war elf and that puts us at six. This card right here would be a good decision. It puts us at 10. We know defensively yellow could probably get to a total of 10 also though, because as far as we know, we know the one divine intervention card or the one combat card they played was a plus four plus one. So there's a good chance that they might still have their five and two card. So we need to figure out exactly what we want to do. So we need to think about that. So we could also play our five two card knowing that, but we also realize that we don't want to lose this pyramid, so we don't want to have a whole bunch of casualties and a whole bunch of losses. So we could play the card that is gonna give us plus two attack, plus two defense. Play this card right here, which is gonna be another plus two, that's gonna be four plus six is still 10. Probably a little bit too risky, so I'm not going to do that. So we are probably just gonna to have to take some losses this fight because that's just what happens but we do have power, so we might actually work out really, really well in this fight. This is the card we're gonna play for the fight. These are the two divine intervention cards we are gonna play with this fight, and then we need to pick a card that we are going to discard. Thinking we are going to discard, it's such a tough call. That's one of the biggest fun parts of the game is the strategy, ooh, no. Don't wanna do that. No, actually, yeah, what the heck, we're gonna discard that one. Now we get to go over to yellow who does not have any power and we know that as the green player so they cannot play any divine intervention cards. So we are just going to play the most obvious card here for the yellow player, we'll place that right there. They cannot play any divine intervention cards but you know we could bluff if we want to and play the bluffing divine intervention card. Going to do that just so you see how that works. So now that we've revealed our battle cards, let's go ahead and reveal our battle plans. So battle plan and battle plan. First thing happens, reveal divine intervention. This does absolutely nothing, so let's go ahead and put it back over here for the player. Over here to green, they're gonna play these two, which is gonna cost them two power. Luckily, we have the two power to pay for this, so not a big deal. So we have a total strength of six, plus four is 10, plus two more is gonna be 12 attack power. So can the yellow player get up to 12 attack power? Well, we have five plus five is 10. No, they cannot. That means that the green player has won this fight. So let's go ahead and figure out the casualties. So first thing that's gonna happen is we have two black drops right here from the yellow player, which means two green guys are going to be killed. They're gonna die. Luckily, we know that green has won this fight, so it's not a big deal. And we also have one kill right here. So that means yellow is also gonna suffer, suffer a kill. Let's go ahead and discard this right here. And now let's go ahead and figure out our total attack strength versus the other player's defense. So yellow has zero defense at all. We have three total blood drops. That means that's gonna be three more kills for us. That actually worked out very, very well. That guarantees that we are going to hold on to the spot very nicely and very well, and that makes us very happy. So since we successfully won a fight, we are going to gain a combat victory. We're just gonna go right there, and I forgot to use the wrong side on that one. So we have one combat permanent. We have won this battle. Yellow player, since they did not win, they're going to gain one more veteran token, which means they now have two veteran tokens, meaning they have some choices during the night phase. But now they need to decide if they're going to retreat or if they're going to recall. I think that we are going to do a... I think we're actually going to do a retreat action because we can go over and put some pressure over on black, I think. Or would we want to be mean and just try to put some pressure over on the person who just attacked us? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and retreat one right here because this one guy right here, if they can move into this location right here, and if we don't get defeated, we will temporarily have access to a level four pyramid, which means we can buy level four abilities. That could work out really well in our benefit. But to do that, we are going to need a silver tile because if we get a silver action token, that means that we can take two actions on one turn. That's gonna be extra, extra fun and definitely something we can 
talk about or think about strategically. So that's it for the green player's turn. Let's go over to yellow. Yellow is going to gain three power. So that puts us back up to three power. Now we get to go over to black. Now black has one pyramid or one temple, which is gonna mean that they're not getting two permanent victory points. But we gain power by doing this. So let's gain a three power. That puts us back up to three. Now we go back to green. Green needs to figure out what they want to do. I am simply going to, do I pray? I don't have any options. We're gonna pray. That's gonna give us two power. That's gonna help us for the next round because we wanna go into the next round with a little bit of power. Yellow is going to be next and yellow is also going to pray. Hmm. Or do I move in? Do I move in? No, because I want that right there. So we are going to pray, gaining three more power. That's gonna be a total of six power for us. And that is going to leave one player left over who has either summon or they have move. Let's see here. Did I forget to, I did forget to discard a card for the yellow player. Uh-oh, I'm a dirty, horrible cheater. Let me go ahead, since I was a dirty, horrible cheater and forgot to do that, let's go ahead and randomize that because that's the punishment for being a dirty, horrible cheater. Cheaters never prosper. So I have a move action or I have a summon action. I'm thinking we're going to summon. Or do I want to move? Gosh, I actually have a lot of good decisions. I'm the last player. Fortune favors the bold. <laughs> Fortune favors the bold. I am going to, you know what? I'm gonna be a jerk. But that's a game of Kemet in a good, very, very good way. I like it. So let's go and do this. We're gonna do a move action. We're gonna do these guys. And remember, we have a total movement of three because we have this token right here. Plus we have the scorpion plus our basic move of one. So that means we have a total movement of three. So I'm just gonna pick up the scorpion right now, show what I'm doing. One movement point, two movement points. Hello, three movement points. We're gonna leave one guy back and we are going to initiate a battle. Now, if we can win this battle, means we're gonna keep two temples at the end of the round, which is gonna be one permanent victory point for us. So this could be a very, very, very important battle for the black player right now. So starting with the black player who is doing the aggression here, let's figure out which battle card we want to play. Now remember, we have the Scorpion, which is plus two to our strength automatically. So we have a total strength of six right now. So let's look through and see what kind of combat powers we have. We want to win this fight. If we win this fight, all we gotta do is just win this fight and it's victory points for us. So we are going full board attack power. Now, what I could have done before I did this is, okay, so we have four plus two is six strength. We are gonna play this battle card right here and we are going to bluff just because it's fun to bluff. Now we gotta figure out which card we want to discard. Thinking we are going to discard, well, I hate to do it, but we'll discard that card. Okay, now let's see here. Green needs to figure out exactly which card they want to play. They also have the same card, which would be very nice, but they need to win the, this fight badly. We have three strength plus the elephant is one strength. That's a total of four strength. How high do we want to go? Is it better just to give the spot up? Those are all the strategies and the tactics when you play the game of Kemet. I'm thinking, actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna be A-OK -okay with doing it this way. We will play this card for the green player, and then we need to pick a card that we are going to discard. I'm thinking we're gonna discard that card. So we have figured out our cards, and of course we could do a Divine Intervention card, but we're not gonna bother because it's basically a bluff. Let's reveal our Divine Intervention cards, and let's figure out the total combat strengths for both of our players. So for the black player, we have a total of six strength, plus four is gonna be a total of 10 strength. Now we're gonna go over to the green player, 
and they actually played pretty smart because they guaranteed they're not going to lose any units here because they had a pretty good chance that they're going to lose this fight. So we have three strength right here, plus the one more for the elephant is total of four, plus two is going to be a six. So they are going to lose this fight. So the first thing we need to do is we need to realize that we're going to gain some victory points, but let's not worry about that quite yet. So now that we figured out who the victor of this battle is, now let's go ahead and figure out any casualties. There's no black blood draws for either one of our players. So we're going to take our total blood strength here, which is three, because we got two from the scorpion, plus one more as a total of three blood. So we're going to look over here and see that we have two defense. But since we have the elephant, we have plus one more defense, which means we're not going to suffer any losses. So even though we're losing the space, it's going to be A-OK -okay for us because we're going to gain back two power out of this. So we're going to be happy with those results. So let's discard that card. Let's discard this card right here. And now let's go ahead and gain our permanent victory point because Black is going to win this fight. So Black player is now at total of four victory points. So they're basically painting a big old bullseye on their forehead. And green is going to retreat. Now green is going to go ahead, instead of retreating, they're going to recall, which means they're going to gain all three of these units back in their pool, but they're going to gain two power out of it. And as a nice benefit, they're also going to gain a veteran token. So this is actually going to work out really darn well for them. Their elephant is going to come back right here, and now they have this nice, wonderful troop that's ready to be deployed all over again, giving them lots of options. Now, of course, black is kind of looking good right now. So they are going to steal this from green, meaning that green is down to one victory point and black is now up to five, painting an even bigger target on their foreheads. But hey, that's the way the game goes. And this is a game where you don't want to pick, put a huge target on your forehead because as soon as you do, everybody else looks right at you and says, that's the person we're going to take out. So now the black player's turn is not quite over because we're going to go ahead and burn our divine intervention card and we are going to reinforce this location because that divine intervention card allows you to repopulate a pyramid or a current troop. Now since this is a troop, that's going to put that troop back up to five. And that divine intervention card allows you for two troops. So we're going to put one troop there and we're going to put our second troop over there. Not a great thing, but hey, maybe they hold on to that spot for just a little bit longer. But the nice thing is we're about to get another victory point here very, very quickly. And none of the players can stop us from doing it. So that's kind of nice right here. But let's go ahead and start our night phase. So top of the thing for our night phase, we are going to sacrifice two units at the pyramid right here, which is going to give us one permanent victory point. And then let's go ahead and replace that. So now we have six victory points for that player. Now we're going to figure out the Delta Temple. Green is going to sacrifice one unit, which is going to gain them five power. So they're going to go from four all the way up to nine power. Very, very nice right there. Since the black player now controls two temples, they're going to gain one permanent victory point, which means they're now at seven victory points, which means all the other players need to definitely do something to stop them from winning the game. And now every single one of our players is going to gain two victory points, except for white, who's going to gain, or yellow, who's going to gain nine. So yellow actually has an overabundance of prayer points right now. So we're going to gain up to five and up to 11. And you are also going to go all the way up to 11 prayer points. So let's go ahead and gain divine invention cards. We're going to start with the green player. They are going to gain a nice combat one, which is plus one strength, plus one wound. Next one's going to be for yellow, who's going to gain plus two defense. And then the next one is going to be for black, who is going to gain plus two defense. Now, people with veteran tokens can buy more divine intervention cards. We are not going to do that, I don't think. Although it does look really, really nice for yellow, who has an abundance of power. And they have two veteran tokens. That could actually be a really good decision for them. Do I want to do it though? It's either this or we summon units. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're going to burn them. Not for the divine intervention. We're going to use it for units. So we're going to bypass that. So now we get to go to the conscript phase. Nobody has any veteran tokens except for yellow and green. So yellow is going to discard two veteran tokens and they're going to conscript two guys into this spot right here. And then green is going to discard one token right here, and they're going to conscript over here. 
And let's see here. We're done with the conscription. Remember, if you don't spend any of your veteran tokens, any ones that are left over are going to be discarded at this point. And now it's time for all our players to gain back their action tokens or the action markers. And then we will start the next round after we figure out what the new player order is. Now, remember, the person who has the least amount of victory points gets to decide where they can act in player order. So the person with the least amount of victory points right now is green. Green is going to decide that they want to go, thinking they want to go last because they want to watch what everybody else is doing. So they're going to go last. Next up is going to be yellow, who decides that they want to see what black is going to do. And then that means that black has no choice. They have to go first. So now we move back to the day phase for the new turn. And we have a lot of choices, lots and lots of choices. Okay, so black knows that they have a huge target on the forehead. But how big of a target is this? Is the big question. I am thinking that uh, if they can just hold that for one more round, they're looking pretty darn good. Well, they're going to hope that the other player is just going to be dumb. So we will take that. We'll spend a two going down from five down to three, and we're going to conscript two guys right there. Okay. Yellow is going to go next. Now, yellow is going to purchase and yellow is going to spend four power on their purchase and they're going to buy a white power tile which is going to go from 11 down to seven and they're going to buy this power tile right here which is going to allow them to get a silver token now the nice thing about having a silver token is when you spend a regular action token you can also spend one of your silver tokens as part of that action not as a separate action as part of your action so basically you can do two actions in one round that's kind of a nice tricky thing to do so that's it for yellow. Now we get to go to green. Green is going to do a huge conscription because they want to go ahead and start taking things away from black who is looking too darn good right now. He's looking super pretty. He wants to use some really good styling gel today. So we're going to summon. We're going to summon five, which is going to go from 11 down to six. And that means that we are going to have this nice army of units right over here next to this pyramid. And we're going to do our best to get some revenge versus black because Hey, payback is fun. So that's going to be it for the green player. And now we go to go back to black. What does black want to do? Black knows that they have a huge target on the forehead. So they need to figure out what they can do to make sure this huge target does not affect them too much. Unfortunately, they need to play kind of a waiting game right now. So we're going to go over here to gain three power, which will put us back up to six. Let's watch what the other players are going to do. Now we're going to go to yellow. Yellow is going to do a move action moving into this location right here and then they are going to purchase with their silver token they're going to purchase a blue power tile they are going to spend three power right now and that's going to go from seven down to four and they're going to purchase this power tile right here which is going to give them one free victory point right here right now that cannot be taken away from them so now they are at four victory points two of which are permanent victory points. So it actually looks really, really good to them. Now, if this pyramid right here had actually been at level four, I would have purchased a Sphinx, but unfortunately it was not there yet. So green is not gonna worry about the fact that that pyramid is being used by the yellow player. Let's go over to green, who is going to do a move action. And they're gonna burn two power, six down to four, and they're gonna do a huge beam me up Stargate style and we're going to go for a guaranteed win and plus it's worth more power so we're going to beam up over here which is going to go there all these units are going to go here and this is going to be a total of six units now remember we can have up to seven units because we have this card right here which allows us to have seven units in a troop so now our total strength is going to be seven plus it is going to be one more for the elephant that puts us at a total of Am I doing the math wrong? Yeah, it puts us a total of seven attack power versus two attack power. So we know pretty much this is gonna be a foregone conclusion. There's nothing black can do can stop us. So we can pretty much use this as an opportunity to save some units and not use an overly powerful attack card. So this will be our attack card that we are going to play. We're not gonna bother with a divine intervention because we know we're gonna win this fight. We do need to pick a card to get rid of though. 
I'm thinking, 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 thinking that we are going to discard that one right there. That's it for green. Now we get to go to black and need to figure out exactly what card they're going to play. So I'm thinking that we want to do this smart. I think we're just going to play that and then we are going to discard that one. Let's go ahead and reveal our cards. Do we want to do a divine intervention card? Don't think we want to do that. So let's go ahead and reveal. We'll reveal for both of our players. So let's figure out our total strength. We have a total of seven strength plus three is going to be a total of 10 strength versus black who has a total of four strength. So that means black is going to lose here. So that means since we're losing, now let's go ahead and figure out the total of casualties. Neither one of these players have any blood drops on them, so we're not going to have to worry about that at all. So let's go ahead and gain a victory point for green, which is going to be a permanent victory point since they're trailing all the way behind. That's actually pretty good for them. Let's go ahead and discard this. Black is going to gain a veteran token. Black needs to do a recall. We're going to recall both of these. That's going to give us one power point, puts us back up to seven. Now we get to go over to the black player's turn and let's decide what we want to do on our turn. We're really looking good in victory points, but we need to do something really quick here so we don't fall behind and lose our great, great advantage that we have right now. So how do we do this without sacrificing what we've obtained so far? I'm thinking we have we have four permanent victory points. We're actually looking really good. If I can get a fifth permanent victory point, that'll just draw a huge bullseye on my forehead. So let's go and put that big old bullseye on my forehead because, hey, why the heck not? Let's go and buy a red power tile. Let's go ahead and spend three power going down from seven down to three. And let's just buy this one right here because, hey, it's fun and it's devious and it's mean and it's something I want to do. So that's it for black. Now black is basically saying to everybody on the board, come take me out or I am going to win the game. You have to do something against me right here and right now or the game is going to be mine. And yellow says, I can work with that. That is definitely something I can work with. So you're saying that if I don't do something, game is yours. Let me go ahead and take the game directly from you then. We will go ahead and spend one movement action we will burn two power going down from four down to two and let's go ahead and do a beam me up scotty right here and we're going to have another fight let's figure out what fight cards we want to play here yellow's played card yellow is going to discard a card and just for grins yellow is also going to play a divine intervention card Black is going to look at their cards. Black has been just like mad man when it comes to attacking and when it comes to combat. I think we're going to play that one. If we're going to go down, let's go down fighting. But hey, let's play this divine intervention card right here. So all of our players have played their cards. Let's go and reveal our cards, our divine intervention cards. So each person needs to spend one power for divine intervention cards. We just played. Okay, so let's figure this out. Yellow has a total of three plus three is going to be, I'm sorry, yellow has a total of five plus three is a total of eight attack strength. The black has a turn attack strength of three plus three is six. That means yellow wins. So let's go ahead and give yellow their victory point here before I forget. So now that we figure that out, let's go ahead and figure out what the casualties are going to be here. So black is going to do two points of damage which would have been great, which would have looked wonderful, but unfortunately we have three points of defense here. And since yellow has no blood drops, black is not going to use any units here, but they've still lost the fight and they have still lost the location here. So that means that they need to retreat. We are going to do a full retreat. Is that yellow? That is going to be yellow. Full retreat, which is going to gain us two power and we will recall all of those units right here right now that's a-okay for us we're good with that we are okay we don't mind that at all options though options 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 are always always good here i'm thinking that we can be sneaky again if i really really wanted to be sneaky i can be sneaky 
<laughs> yes, we're gonna be super sneaky. So that was Yellow's action. They did gain a power, but Black is gonna gain a veteran token for losing the fight. Before I forget, well, let's make sure we do that. That was Yellow's turn. It is now Green's turn to take an action. Green is kind of sitting kind of happy and pretty. They really don't need to do anything. Of course, Yellow's being a kind of annoying thorn, but really not hurting them at all. It's not a big deal at all. It's not really stopping them from doing anything. So let's just go ahead and gain two power, right? Or do we have it? No, we do not. Let's go ahead and gain two power. That puts us up to six. Now back to black. Okay, black is not going to gain a victory point because they don't have two temples. So they cannot grab the win right here, right now. So let's figure out a way that we can gain some victory points because that is what we want to do. Because gaining victory points is basically the name of the game. So we cannot get any more units. So how can we guarantee some victory points? Let's go ahead and pray right now, which is gonna put us from five all the way up to eight, because remember we have this power right here, which is going to put us at eight right here, right now. Yep, I think that's what we're going to do. That is definitely what we're gonna do. I'm liking my decision right here, right now. Let's go over to the yellow player now, who needs to figure out exactly what they wanna do. So yellow is going to do a, well, they can't conscript because they've already done the conscript action. And what do they want to do? Yellow's looking okay on victory points. Not terrible, but we definitely need to shut down black. We can't conscript, so we can't do anything there. What can we do which would look really, really good for us and help us out right now? Is there anything we can do? This is a level, let's just do a prey. That's going to put us all the way back up to four power over to green. Green is, green just needs to stop resting on the laurel. See, green is just playing way too of a sit back, laissez faire style of game and it's not winning the, the game at all. They need to stop playing so eh, wishy-washy because wishy-washy doesn't win you this game. What does win you this game is victory points. So let's get some victory points. How do we do it though? Ah, right now there's just not a lot of great ways to do it because we kind of put ourselves in kind of a pickle here. We were too darn defensive. You know what, yellow is basically a free victory point at this point. Let's just go get ourselves a free victory point. Movement. We wanna make sure we control that. So one point of movement, because the elephant does give us an extra one point of movement, so that's our one movement point. We're gonna gain on the docks, come all the way over here, and that's going to be our second point of movement. Letting yellow know that next turn, they're a free victory point if they don't move out of our temple or out of our pyramid very, very quickly. That's gonna be it. We are now over to black who has a couple decisions. I think I know what I'm going to do with the black player. I think what we are going to do is we are going to work on ways to really solidify a very good victory here very, very quickly. If I can solidify a good victory, things are going to look up for us. That's basically what I'm trying to do here. If I can solidify a nice victory, everything's going to be awesome for us. Can I do it though? I go one, two, I can do it. I basically just, I did it. Three moments, so one, two, three, and attack. Green thought they were going for a victory point. All they did was just open up a victory point for us. Let's go and take advantage of it because we still have the ability to move. Of course, that means they'll have to stop us the next round though, but hey, this is 100% worth doing. Movement, so we have the scorpion plus we have the movement tile. That means we have a total movement power of three. So we're gonna move one, two. We will spend a two power to teleport from our pyramid all the way over to this obelisk. And I'm just going to take, well, let's just take these guys with us right here and right now, just cause it looks really, really cool. And we are going to initiate a combat. Now, the nice thing is we have all of our combat cards back. Green has two combat cards. So let's go in and figure out exactly what red is going to do. 
Let's see here. Well, you know what? Oh, no, 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 no. Let's play this smart. Let's see here. Doing the math really, really quick, we see that we have six strength. I'm going to play this combat card right there. And then you pick one to discard. I'm going to discard that one. Now the green player needs to figure out what they want to do. I think that they want to do as much damage as possible. So this is the discard and this is their player. Are they going to do any divine intervention? You know what? What the heck? Let's do a divine intervention because you know what? Let's be as big of a thorn in their side as we can. Let's go ahead and reveal. So we'll reveal for both of our players. And let's spend the one power for green, which is going to give them plus one to the strength. Not what they really wanted, but they want to cause as much damage as possible to the black player. At least be as much of a pain in the neck to them. So we're going to see that green has a total attack strength of six. Black has a total strength of four plus two from the scorpion is going to be six. Plus two more is going to be eight. So they are going to win this fight. So let's go ahead and take our victory token so I don't forget about it. Lucky we're not going to win the game for everybody else because you need to start your turn with nine total victory points. It just looks really good for us right now. So now let's go ahead and figure out damage. So two black blood drops, that's going to be two losses for us instantly. We have no choice in that matter. Plus we have one more blood drop right here. Well, luckily we played the two defense. So that one blood drop is not gonna cause us any extra problems. So that's a good thing that we actually played this card. We played very, very smart. Green could have caused us a lot more problems, but luckily they did not do it. And now green gets back all of their combat cards. So green is going to gain one veteran token. They're gonna to recall, basically go back there because there's not much else they can do. And I think that's just basically what we want to do right there. So that's basically it for the black player's turn. Their turn is done. Now it's up to the yellow player who needs to take away some victory points from yellow or from black very, very quickly. Because they have, let's see, they have this from yellow who does not have that. Oops, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. They have this from yellow. Got to make sure I'm paying very, very close attention because yellow does not have that pyramid anymore. We're at 10 victory points. We got to take away those victory points from them as quick as possible. Can we do it though? We only have one action left. So it's going to be very, very hard, but not impossible if we can get a silver extra action token. There's a chance if yellow and green tag team up, they can take out black, or at least stop black from winning at the start of the next round. They need to do it. How can they do it though? There's a couple different options. We just need to do it smart and figure out exactly what we want to do and how we want to do this. Wow. We kind of just paint ourselves into a very bad pickle here. Bad playing while I was just trying to show you all the options for the game. For the defender plus one attack, two more guys. Plus one defense. I... Gosh, if only I had a move. Only had a move. If only, only, only I had a move, everything would be wonderful. I am going to spend this to get plus one attack from this power tile right. Actually, that's going to cost me nothing because all power tiles cost me minus one to their cost. I will take that. Yellow. Yellow needs to do something. What is yellow going to do here? Yellow is going to buy a red power tile, a level three red power tile. Since we do have a red level three pyramid, we're going to go down from four down to one, and we are going to take the scarab. Again, remember, we need to do whatever we can to take out black as quickly as possible. Back to the night phase, we're going to start with the temple or the sanctuary of the all gods. We are going to sacrifice two. We're going to take that nice permanent victory point for the yellow player. That does put yellow at five victory points. And the nice thing about it is four of those victory points are actually permanent victory points. And permanent victory points are very nice because, again, they cannot be taken away from you. So next thing we're going to go over here is the sanctuary or the temple over here. And we need to figure out if we want to sacrifice one unit for five power. That would put us at 10, 
Plus we're gonna gain two more, which will put us at 11. So to put us at our max, it will also give us a unit to summon. So I'm not really doing this for the power, I'm doing this because I want a unit to summon. So I'm gonna sacrifice one. We're gonna go from five all the way up to 10 because we're gonna gain five more power right there. And again, the important thing is we've managed to sacrifice that unit right there. So currently we see that black still controls two temples. So since he controls two temples, yep, that means they're going to gain a one more permanent victory point. So is it even possible for the other players to win the game still? Yeah, they can still take away, yeah, they still take away four of his temporary victory points, which would put him back down to possibly losing. So it's just gonna be really, really up to the players to figure out exactly how they wanna start black because black has a really good commanding lead. Again, this was not a strategy video. This was a video to show you how to play the game. So black is now gonna gain five power. That's gonna put them up to 11 because they control two temples. And now we get to the prayer. So yellow is going to gain the biggest benefit from the prayer. It's going up from, they're gonna gain nine more. That puts them all the way up to 10. Green is gonna go up to 11. Black is already up to 11. Obviously we're not gonna spend any of our veteran tokens because that'd be dumb since we're already at max power there. So let's go to the divine intervention. Every single player is gonna get one card. So starting with black, black is going to gain, ooh, that is very, very nice. Nice, they're gonna be able to get some more units, which can be very, very helpful. And then finally, green is going to get hmm, also very, very nice. Okay, so everybody gets their divine intervention cards. Does anybody want to buy more? I'm not thinking so. Well, no, actually green probably wants to because they, yes, they want to. They are going to buy a divine intervention card. Come on, lucky good card. Not a lucky good card, not the one we wanted. Okay, so now we get to go, go to conscripting. So we are going to spend two of our veteran tokens right here and we will conscript right there. Now let's take back all of our action tokens. And I think Black just played very, very smart and made sure that hopefully they can start with a total of nine victory points on their turn. So all the players need to figure out the new player order. So Green gets to figure out what they want to do. Obviously they don't want Black to go first, so they will say, I'll go first. Yellow's gonna say, oh heck yeah, I wanna go second, because if I go third, I've lost the game. So that's gonna be the player order for our final, possibly our final round of the game. Okay, this is gonna be our final round of the game. So first things first, Green is figuring out how we can deprive Black of victory points Temporary victory points. We need to take away three temporary victory points very, very, very quick. How do we do it is the big question though. And racking my brain trying to figure out if we can even do it. I can take away two. I just don't know if I can take away three. Okay, we're gonna start with the green player. The green player possibly, let's see, two, four, five, seven. I can possibly do this. I can. I think I can do this. We will see. Famous last words. Emphasis <laughs> on famous last words. Let's see if we can do this. So for the green player, we are gonna spend one power and we're going to do a move action. So we have an elephant with us, which means technically we could move two if we really, really wanted to, but we don't need to move two. We're simply gonna go over here and move one right here. We are gonna attack black and hopefully we're gonna take this pyramid away from black. I don't see how we could lose this fight, but we just wanna avoid losing it in a very, very grand, grand, super horrible way. So, since we are the aggressor, we have plus one attack because of this power tile right here, which is gonna give us plus one to our attack as a green player. So that's one bonus. We have the elephant with us, which is gonna give us plus one more attack, which means we have a total of two attack going on right now which makes me think I should have actually gone right there because yellow and green are basically gaining up on black. Yeah, I'm actually thinking that's what we need to do. Not wanting to, but that's what we kind of sort of have to do. So for our move action, we are gonna use our two points of movement. We're gonna go one, two points of movement right here because we are hopefully hoping that the silver talisman is all yellow needs and hopefully they're gonna be able to do some wonderful, amazing magic. So we are attacking, so we have a plus two attack because the elephant and because we are the aggressor. 
plus we have a total of six units here or is it five? It's only five units here. So that's two, five, six, seven attack strength right now. Let's find our attack card, because remember, this is going to be the big old Hail Mary play, and we are going to make some magic happen. So that is going to be our attack card. Do we want to do a Divine Intervention? Oh, sure, why not? That's going to be the Divine Intervention for green. Now Black needs to look at all their attack cards and figure out what they want to do. Let's see here. Let's be a pain in the neck. Do we want to be a pain in the neck? Well, we want to be a pain in the neck. How do we do this? That and that would make us a big old pain in the neck. Do we want to do divine intervention? We do not do want to do divine intervention. So let's go ahead and reveal here really, really quick. So divine intervention card played by green. So let's go ahead and figure out what our total tax strength is. We can see that green basically just eyeball green is already going to win. They're at plus seven plus five is 12 versus black, which is going to be at four plus five is nine. Cause I think the scorpion is plus two, right? Yep. So plus two to the scorpion from the scorpion strength. So green is going to win the fight and green is going to get a permanent victory point marker for winning the fight. So now that we resolve the fight, let's go ahead and figure out our damage. So both these sides are going to suffer two casualties because both of them have a black blood drop on them. And unfortunately, this defense is not going to help us at all. It would have been a great if they we thought that black was going to play some of the red blood drop. Didn't happen, so that will be discarded. This will be discarded. That does mean that the scorpion is going to disappear and go back to their power tile. We are going to lay claim to this location, and black, as a last parting effort, is going to gain a veteran token. That is it for the green player's turn. Now we get to go to the yellow player. So the first thing the yellow player is going to do, they're going to spend this divine intervention card right here, which is going to allow them to gain two units. I don't think I can do this. Oh my gosh, this is nerve wracking. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do, actually I'm going to split those units up. No, I'm definitely not going to split those units up. That'd be dumb. So we are going to do our first action right here, which is going to be a move action. And as part of that move action, we are going to spend that this divine intervention allows us to travel from one obelisk to another obelisk as part of the move. So there is traveling to the no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Darn it, I was hoping beyond hope that I can do it, but I cannot see how I can do it. Ah, it was just... Darn it, there's just no way to do it because of the wall. I forgot about the wall aspect. If only I had the phoenix. If I had the phoenix, I could have done it. Well, actually, maybe I can do it still. Let's take this back. No, it, there's no way to do it. Well, let's just make it all look cool because there's no way we can actually stop black. But hey, let's go ahead and try to make this look as cool as possible. So let's go ahead and spend two power. And we'll get a red token and we will get the phoenix. So we'll add the phoenix and this token right here just because what the heck. Let's go ahead and go, go out in a blaze of glory. So we're going to summon the Phoenix right there. And this is not really going to help us at all, but ah, darn it. I wanted to make this be a really cool fight. It's not a cool fight. There's nothing cool that we can do here at all. So let's just do a, I don't know. Let's just do a move action. We're going to teleport from one obelisk to another obelisk by spending this divine intervention token right there like that. Gosh, this was such could have been, Really could have been, but at least we're going to start a fight here. So let's figure out what we want to do for our fight right here. We are going to, we'll play that card. That one will get discarded. Gray or black is going to spend that one. 
That is it for both of our players. We are going to reveal at the same time. Nobody has any divine intervention cards at all. So this is the yellow player. We see that we have a total of six strength. Black is going to have a total of four strength. Kind of close. So two blood drops versus three defense means no defense, no units lost here. One blood drop versus no defense. Yep, you guess it. They are going to be defeated. Yellow is going to gain a victory point for completely a successful battle. Black is going to gain a veteran token. This temporary will move over here to yellow, putting yellow at seven, or I'm sorry, yeah, seven total victory points, but again, it's not going to be enough to stop the victory. We tried so hard, tried, tried so hard, but of course it didn't quite make it. But again, like I said, this was not a video to try to show you deep strategy for the game. This total point of this video is just to show you the actual gameplay for Kemet Blood and Sand. So that is going to end it for the yellow player's turn. And now we get to go to the black player who gets to simply steeple their fingers and look very maniacal. And with a very big grin and say, congratulations, I have won the game. Because they're going to start their turn with nine victory points. So this has been a full game of Kemet Blood and Sand, which is basically the second edition of Kemet. This was a three-player game where, again, it was not all about strategy. I was basically showing you all the gameplay. Showed you a whole bunch of power tiles. I showed you movement. Showed you different ways to gain victory points. Ways to gain victory points. Way to steal victory points. Ways to do different kinds of tactics and different strategies. So my goal with this video was to show you as much variety in gameplay as possible for Kemet so you can see if Kemet Blood and Sand is a game for you and your gaming group. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, make sure you leave them down in the YouTube comments down below. I will definitely get to them as quickly as I can. You can also feel free to email me at off the shelf board game reviews. That's OTSBGR gmail.com. I'll be sure to answer your email as quick as I can. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy the content, and if the content in this video channel helps you spend your gaming dollars in a good way, think about tossing a tip over in the tip jar over at Patreon. That's patreon.com slash OTSBGR. Just one dollar in the tip jar is a great way to show show thanks. I basically run this channel on the honor system. I don't do Kickstarters. I don't do funny games or contests or hide content or anything like this. Basically, I put out this content so everybody can enjoy this wonderful gaming hobby. Just tossing a dollar in the tip jar is a great way to say thanks. If you enjoy this video, if you enjoy this video series, click that like button, click that subscribe button. As always, thanks for watching.